James Maxwell, Dr. Ginger Hamster. In Bustle, we see an article uh, to all the male feminists out there. Here's what you really need, what we really need from you. You know, what is this? Why is it uh, lately? Uh, perhaps it's the Me Too campaign or, or what have you, but it's like, oh, this is what we need from men. I didn't think feminists needed anything from men. Fishes and bicycles and that kind of shit. But everywhere you look is another article. Oh, here's what we really need from you, you male feminists. Um, I would say what you need from male feminists here, Lauren, the authoress of the article, is that they keep your ha <laughs> their, their hands off of women. Uh, you may have noticed in the Me Too that... Um, except for a couple of high-profile Republican conservative types, uh, Bill O'Reilly and this Roy Moore character, maybe Garrison Keillor, though I think Garrison's pretty much a liberal as well. The rest of them are all radical male feminist types. And when one, as in Matt Damon, as in Matt said, a grab on the ass isn't the same as rape, so we can't conflate the two, you want to go out and ruin his career as a male feminist. Feminist. You don't want him in the movies anymore because he pointed out the obvious reality of things on the ground. So what does Lauren have to say? This year, male feminists cropped up everywhere in t-shirts and Facebook posts. Really? Everywhere? <laughs> you, you do realize most male feminists are just trying to get some of that sweet, stinky feminist poontang, right? Or, or are you that f***ing blind? Maybe, maybe it's that. Last January, the pussy hats at the Women's March, Weinstein's downfall. Everyone, not just they, everyone, every decent human being in the country labeled his alleged behavior a disgusting abuse. Everybody, everybody. Going into 2018, however, there's still a lot of work to do. You, 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 <laughs> what? you often hear that too. Well, you know, we've made a lot of progress, but there's still a lot of work to do. Really? Like what? Exactly. Let's find out. Let's see what Lauren has to say. A lot of work to do around women's issues, so male feminists should note what women actually need from them. I didn't think women needed men at all. <laughs> yes, of reasons and stuff. Celebrity male feminists have become a kind of societal barometer for what other men should or shouldn't do, really. Uh, Matt Damon included. Is that, uh, is that we, should, we should point out the reality and facts and, and such? But putting on a woke t-shirt, <laughs> sure sign of someone who has a small pair of balls, does not a real feminist make. That's right, they're just trying to get some pussy. Uh, this is not a big surprise. I don't know why, but maybe have a fetish for chicks with weirdly dyed hair and tattoos and nose rings and uh, face jewelry and all that other shit. Nor does adding feminist to your Twitter bio, don't get me wrong, she says, it's great. That some men are labeling themselves feminists. <laughs> yeah, sure it is. And speaking out about women's rights, you mean the rights you don't have under law in this country that men have over women. Those rights. Yeah. Now let's talk about those. Which one would that be, Lauren? But I digress. But the first lesson male feminists have to learn is to listen to women, of course, and let us do the talking for a change. As if women uh, don't talk all the time. You see, feminists are, are generally involved with a movement that talks and bitches about a lot of stuff, but never ever offers a solution to any of the problems except more and bigger government and higher taxes and, and stuff like that. She writes, following a year of reproductive battles, re reproductive rights, what, what, what battle? What battle were you fighting for reproductive rights, which actually is just abortion? What, what has happened there? Uh, did somebody try to limit abortion or take it away and make... No. No. No, 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 no. But uh, hey, you know, whatever works for you. An unwavering gender wage gap. The myth. The legend. That will never, ever die. You know, I was looking at some stuff from the early 90s and 80s. Did you know the gender wage gap has been virtually the same since then? As if nothing ever has made any... You know why? Because it'll never go away. Because the way they calculate it, it's just... I mean, look at it this way. If you just look at the average number of hours women work compared to men and multiply that times a dollar, it comes out to 79 cents. Wow. I guess that's part of it, huh? And let's see, constant sexual harassment and, and assault allegations. 20 allegations, I'm glad she at least put that. 2018 certainly won't be a breeze for women's issues. It never is. It never will. You'll never be satisfied. 
it'll just never go away. So here are a few suggestions for you male feminists uh, who genuinely want to make the world a safer place for women. Number one, stop interrupting women, you evil men. Avril Limon says, I met a man recently who wanted advice on launching women's leadership programs. He interrupted me halfway through any sentence I uttered. Even after I told him being talked over was a key reason women left jobs, right? Because women are strong and powerful. You go, girl. And some guy who uh, talks over you or some woman, that's enough for you to leave your job. Oh, it must be nice to have all that extra money laying around so you don't have to work. I see. Women are interrupted by men at work. Let me change that for you and fix it, Lauren. People are interrupted by people at work, at the bar, at dinner parties, pretty much in any scenario that involves talking. Correcto. It's a human problem. Uh, if, you, if you want to look at it, it's a problem. Even if you don't think you interrupt people, you could be doing it without realizing it. Ah, okay. So she says, pay close attention to your conversations and apologize if you start to interrupt someone's thought. Sometimes I think, Lauren, this could be, say, in a business situation, if I'm at work, for example, and I go to someone who is a female or even a male, it doesn't really matter. This is what I need from you. Okay. So I need it now. And that means I'm busy. I don't have time to go through the color of the woman's pumps at the Starbucks this morning. I don't care. Give me what I need because I'm busy. So if you're going to give me a bunch of fluff that doesn't matter, I might say, look, you know, that's great. But uh, this is what I need. Give it to me now. And that happens with men and women. So you know, whatever. Evaluate your language. You know, these are all orders from the uh, Feminazi Brigade here. Uh, evaluate your language, you evil male feminist. You remember, she's talking to supposed allies of her cause here. Evaluate your language. Rage Against the Pusheen writes, I'm trying to stop using gender words like guys and dudes, but refer to mixed gender groups of people. I'm settling on buddies. Uh, buddies is sort of a male connotation as well. Uh, but it's, it's okay. Male dominance is so internalized it can be tricky to make your language less gendered. I'm not going to even try. So there you go. How about that? I sometimes catch myself saying someone is bitching about a problem and then remind myself internally that a word used to describe women shouldn't be synonymous with complaining. But oh my God, it is, isn't it? I wonder why. <laughs> There's usually a kernel of something truth in the stereotype. If you know what I mean. Think about how you talk about women. And whether or not you would talk about a man in the same way. Yeah, I, call, I say when a man is bitching, I say, God, he's bitching again. Jesus. What the what? Proof that you can find harm anywhere you look if you try hard enough. Hold other men accountable. Men need to hold other men accountable from Terry Crews. Uh, the actor and athlete talks the time. Okay, great. She writes, it's vital that men hold other men accountable. It's one thing to join discussions about Weinstein's tenure in Hollywood and another to actively call out men who are acting inappropriately. What about the women that didn't call out Harvey Weinstein for acting inappropriately? What about that? What about the fact that the women who didn't say a word allowed him to continue his reign of rape and sexual assault? Because they didn't say anything, save a couple. Like Mira Sorvino told him to f*** off and he pretty much tried to ruin her career. Did you hear what Paul Sorvino had to say about that? <laughs> I'll put the link below. Uh, Paul is Mira's dad and uh, he wasn't too happy about it. She writes, if your friend makes a rape joke, tell them violence against women isn't funny. Of course it isn't funny. If you, and this is the one that really gets stuck in my crawl. If you see someone bothering a woman at the bar or on the street, ask if she's okay and intervene or call the police if necessary. Here's what I say to that. F*** you. Hang out with decent men, not thugs or whatever. I mean, if some guy is tuning up some chick's face, you know, giving her a few uh, pointers here and there. Yeah, I think most men are going to jump in. But uh, uh, some guy bothering a woman at a bar, like asking her out. No, that's your own problem. Say no and walk away. After all, you're strong and independent girls. So have at it. If you recognize that a male coworker belittles a female coworker or takes credit for her ideas. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, that happens all the time. Stand up for her. What men say in private usually indicates how they treat women in real life. So don't brush, his off, brush it off his locker room talk. Since there are no women involved in private men's conversations, you have no idea 
what the hell men talk about. Okay, just like we don't know what women talk about in the bathroom when they're all gathered together like a bunch of hens. And because women often don't feel safe enough to confront men, a male ally stepping in can make a huge difference. No, if you're worried about um, being assaulted or men are big, get a gun, take jujitsu or taekwondo, get some training. You know, if you want to be a strong, independent, powerful girl, then be one. Okay. Holding men accountable also requires believing women listen and believe. That's right. Listen and believe. I will listen. I will help. I'll do everything I can. But I will not believe until there is proof that something happened. And shortly our laws will be changed so there won't be any need for that. Proof. Who, who needs Who needs that? Tell female co-workers what you make. Uh, by some estimates, the gender... Uh, pff, I'm not even going to read it. It's bullshit. Vote for women. Women make up 21% of the Senate, 19.3% of the House of Representatives, but that number is stalled. Learn more about it at Women Rule. Hashtag. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, uh, women are 51% of the population in the United States. So if you want to elect more women, go for it. You're the majority. See, the problem is uh, the 18% of feminists like you, Lauren, uh, you're not a majority. And some women just like having men at the helm. Deal with it. Help with emotional and household labor. How many f***ing times do you have to hear this bullshit? Reductress says, women, woman rather, decides it's too much labor to describe the concept of emotional labor. Go away. Emotional labor like remembering people's birthdays and stuff. I mean, who cares? Even feminist men don't often realize the amount of emotional and physical labor done by female partners or family members got it so hard to vacuum the floor and put clothes in a freaking laundry bin, in the washing machine, and hit a button. <gasps> oh, the horror. What about mowing the lawn or, you know, cleaning windows or shoveling stuff? That doesn't count, you see, because that's men's work. You see how this works. If you live with a female partner or roommate, God forbid, have a discussion about who does what around the house. You know, every time I've been involved in that situation, we do. So I don't know what you're talking about. And most importantly, make sure the division of labor is equal and the tasks aren't divided by gender stereotypes. Well, they are. Because most women don't want to go out and mow the lawn or shovel snow, and men do it because we have to. So there you go. Women have to ask a male partner to tidy up or help with chores as extra work. So pick up your dirty clothes and clean the bathroom when you notice it's looking dirty. I do. And I did. So I guess I'm okay. If you don't live with women, keep in mind that the same dynamics exist when you go home or see family. Cooking and cleaning after a family dinner shouldn't be left to the women while the men watch TV in the other room. Um, I've been in these situations and I've offered to do the dishes or clean up or help with whatever. And they just, I just I will, we'll take care of it. And then the women get in the kitchen and they do their little hand talk and, and the men watch football. I tried. <laughs> I've, I've tried. Okay. Uh, performative male feminism accomplishes nothing. So check your privilege at the door and help women in tangible ways. Going into 2018 again, I do not understand why men need to help the all-powerful, all-strong, all-independent, you-go-girl woman of 2018, the current year. I don't understand it. James Maxwell. Thanks for listening.